in a kitchen. There's a little girl. She's watching her mother prepare dinner. Mommy, she says, why do you always cut the end of the roast off before putting in the oven? Well, I don't know. I never thought about it. Maybe we should ask Grandma, because Grandma taught me to do it. Let's call her. Grandma, Mommy said she learned to cut the end of the roast off from you. Why is that? Well, I don't know. I just assume that's what you do, because that's what my mother, your great-grandmother, always did. Is she there? Can you ask her? Sure. Your great-granddaughter, granddaughter and I, were wondering, why do you cut the end of the roast off before putting it in the oven? Oh, sweetie, I had to cut the end of the roast off. My pan was too small. <laughs> when UNIVAC invented the computer, they refused to talk to any business professionals because it was invented for scientists. So they assumed it had no business applications. Welcome, Watson. IBM once, in fact, said that there was no more than five or six households in the entire planet that would ever have a need for a personal computer. Hello, Apple. The other day, I'm watching the news, and this pundit comes on. And he starts talking about this man. And he says that he knows, in fact, that he will never give up his nuclear program because he had seen other leaders do it, and it had led to their demise. So he wasn't going to. I'm sitting here thinking, who is this guy making a statement like this? A statement that could, in fact, create policy. And I bet you right now, Dennis Rodman knows more about what's going on in this guy's head than anybody on TV. It's scary, but these are the times we live in right now. Look, we all know that assumptions can lead to consequences. Sometimes silly, but other times quite serious. But here's the thing, that's not new news. We all know the jokes about making assumptions. Here's what's new. Under times of certainty and stress, we're making more assumptions, and we are jumping to more conclusions. You see, if we believe that this man will never give up his nuclear program, we may stop trying diplomacy because we think it's useless. And now we're in a blind spot. The number you see here, this is called a zeta byte. And I assure you, it is a real number. This is the amount of information we are taking in within our lives and in our household. In 2010, humanity surpassed this number to the tune of 1.2 zettabytes of media and information consumption. So let me give you some context. A zettabyte is enough information to fill 75 billion iPads. That's roughly nine iPads per person on the planet. That's a lot of information. Now, the latest neuroscience research is telling us what many of us already know. We are simply being bombarded by too much electronic stimuli. It's overworking our brains. It's overtaxing us. So as a result, all the insights, the articles, the social media, the influences, it's amplifying our anxieties. It's causing us to work overtime. And that's a bad thing. See, because when our brains work overtime, it creates uncertainty. And our brains are hardwired for certainty. We have to, we must work on this. When we're under stress, we use assumptions to reduce the amplification of our anxieties. But the problem is, they come with blind spots. You know what else has blind spots? Cars. Cars have blind spots. But they also have the protective measures to avoid them. It's time we did the same thing for our brains. So how do we see through our blind spots? We all make assumptions. It's not a question of if you do it, 
but rather how often and how they go unchecked. You see, not all assumptions are created equal. At some point, you're going to make an assumption. That's a given. Assumptions operate sort of like a, an autopilot in our head, right? It's a structure of our brain that allows us to think more critically while providing us a sense of certainty. Think of it like this, an autopilot in an airplane is so that the basic functions of the plane are automated, so that the pilot and crew can focus on what's most important. Assumptions operate in a similar way. But here's the thing. If you're thinking critically about every thought, feeling, belief that you had all the time, you would never get anything done. Imagine if you had to relearn how to use a fork every time you wanted to eat something. Of course not, right? You just flick on the autopilot and off you go. But here's the thing. We are not examining the settings on our autopilot to see if we've turned on the right one. So it's not a question of what you assume, but rather how you do it. And is it even true? So how do you decipher the truth about your assumptions? That's the bigger question. You see, to do this, it requires a certain set of skills. And these are not mysterious skills. The first thing you need to do is to figure out what you believe. The second thing is to examine against objectivity. And that might mean pulling apart a complex idea or feeling and putting it back together again, and then clearly stating what it is. But here's the challenge. With all this bombardment, our brains are no longer thinking critically anymore. I'll give you an example. Take this quote. That's one small step for a man. That's one giant leap for mankind. Now here is my attempt to express the same sentiment based on how we communicate today. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, a little bit gets lost there, right? So on one hand, our brains are working overtime. We have anxiety. And then we're doing this thing called making an assumption. It's a, a quick fix. But it's a trap. And these are our blind spots. Staying clear takes skill. It's a critical time to be thinking critically. Here's what I see 20 years from now. Because what people confuse as normal is not always the best thing. I see a time where mindfulness training is part of our school's everyday curriculum, where students are learning about the importance of purpose and not just programming. We have to do a better job equipping our kids, our students, our future leaders on how to balance these outside forces with the internal conversations they're having here and here. We need to find ways to focus on not just the aptitude, but the attitude that's going to allow them to not just take small steps, but giant leaps towards what they aspire to achieve. That is our job. Big businesses, government, big corporations, they analyze big data. Then we need bigger measures in place to support those that analyze this data. That's our institutions. That's our companies, our schools. What about us? What about you? What about me? It's time we start taking accountability for our own behavior, our own habits in this area. So let's talk about us today as individuals. You see, it starts with your heart. So how do you access your own heart? What are you afraid to know? What's one thing you least want to accept? What's something you sense without knowing? You see, anything is possible, anything, when you start asking the questions and listening to the answers. But you got to know where to look. So there's four areas to focus on. The first is your career. The second is your wellness. 
The third is your finances. Oh, and let's not forget, probably the most important, your fourth, is your relationships to yourself and to others. You see, when you start asking these questions, you may not like the answers you get. And when that happens, you have a choice. And I've given this a spiritual term called getting rid of your bullshit. <laughs> you see, if you don't like what you hear, you have three options. The first is to dig deep. Keep asking these questions, listening for the answers. The second is you could take a break, pause, but come back. And the third, which is most common for most people, is denial. The problem with the third is that it's the path of least resistance. And the path of least resistance is a highway to least existence. I encourage every single one of you to dig deep. Live your life, not somebody else's. Continue to ask these questions. Listen to the answers. It will provide you a more profound, a more enriching life experience. And in the end, isn't that more satisfying than living like an emoji? Thank you.